Hi, welcome to Preco Tech Tips. I'm Zach Haddock. Today we're going to be talking about knockouts and tandem part stripping. Really what that equates is, is automation for your process. The old way of putting a piece of material in a clicker press and then having to hand strip the slugs of the parts is gone. We can use automated uh, knockout systems to knock out both the slugs and the finished parts, or we can use tandem stripping roll feeds to eject those parts onto a conveyor. There really are a lot of options available to you with your Preco system. First, we're going to be talking about our knockout system. Now, our knockout system is just that. We're knocking out the parts. Sometimes it's referred to in the carton folding world as part stripping or slug stripping, waste removal. Uh, but most commonly in general converting, it's just called knockouts. Now, you have a lot of options with your knockouts. It can be performed just like with a progressive tool where we're doing multiple stages of cut within the die, say a one stage, two stage, or three stage. We can do that exact same thing with our knockouts. What you see right here in front of you is a two-stage knockout. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be knocking out the waste slug, the center ID, on the first stage. And in the second stage, we'll be knocking out a finished part. So we're completing two operations at once. Now, one of the most common questions I get asked about knockouts is, first off, where do I get the knockout? Well, most of the time, your die maker can provide knockout tooling with you at the time you purchase the die. Uh, that way, it is already matched, both in uh, progression length and size. But it's not uncommon for people to make their own. In fact, most of the time, I make my own. And that leads to the next common question I get. How do I know what size to make the knockout, both the male and the female portion? So when we're sizing the knockouts, in general, if I've got good control over my material, that is to say my progression length is fairly accurate and consistent, and my lateral movement or Y crossweb movement is fairly accurate and consistent, I generally like to have an eighth inch over and an eighth inch undersize. Now what that means is, is my male portion knockout, which you see right here, the part that's actually coming down and pushing the part out, I want that to be about an eighth inch undersize from nominal on the part. The female portion, which is here, or the hole that we're knocking the part out through, I would have an eighth inch oversized. That's giving us a total of a quarter inch of free space around the part to allow for any movement of that slug as it comes through and give us a little bit of a safety net when we go to pop it out. Now, some materials, some part geometries, you may have to increase that, which isn't uncommon. We just want to make sure that we've got enough support underneath the part so that the slugs don't fall out prematurely and so that it's not so small that we have a difficult time getting them pushed through. So as I mentioned, there's a lot of different options you have for knockouts. Your die maker can make them in which they would provide you with your tool, both the male and female portion. A lot of people will make their own. This is what I've done right here. This is one I've made for this particular process. You can see it's made out of quarter inch thick PET G that I've cut on our laser system. And it's just as simple as that. You can see I've got the male portion knocking out the part. I've got a removable insert for the female portion that I've made so that I can change out quickly and easily. Uh, but there really are a lot of options. We'll take a look at some of those. Here we have some more examples of knockout systems. These were made by die makers and they came as a set with the die. Uh, so they're matched up uh, pretty much perfectly with the die set. If you haven't figured it out already, a knockout system is pretty much just a crude form of a male-female tool. It is a male-female tool, actually. But instead of cutting, the part's already cut, and we're just knocking the part out through the female portion with the male portion. But the concepts are very similar. We've got stripper foams, stripper bars. These are especially helpful if you've got parts that don't cut cleanly and need a little help. They might want to pull the matrix down into the female portion with them, or perhaps to keep those parts in on thinner gauge materials, we've had to put small nicks in the matrix. These will help hold that matrix in position while the part's being popped out. And they really are helpful. You can see this is a female portion that the die maker has made. It's laser cut plywood, just like you would have on your knockout system when you get it. The only difference is, is now we've got the female holes cut in it. You would just interchange this with the job. Typically, you're gonna have, when you get these made with your die maker, they'll have locating pins. So they line themselves up virtually. You just set them into position, screw the locating pins in, attach them to the pneumatic actuators, and you're good to go. 
So as you can see here, we've just got a, a basic two-stage knockout. We're knocking out the ID, stepping forward, knocking out the OD. If you take a look at this part here, we're just simply knocking away the waste slug in the center and then collecting the final part. Now as far as part collection go, you have a lot of different options when you're using the knockout. We can bulk knock them out, just let them fall into a bin or a waste container if we're knocking out a waste slug. We can knock them out onto a conveyor to be presented to an operator to grab. We can place them in a cassette where they're nice, neat stacks. Or we can, in some instances with the right materials, can give nice, crisp, tall stacks on a decrementing stacking conveyor and then present that stack out to the operator. You really have a lot of different options with the knockout system. So let's take a moment to talk about tandem stripping roll feeds and how they can be used to remove your parts from the matrix. Earlier we looked at knockouts where essentially we're just taking a pneumatic cylinder and we're punching the part out of the matrix. Well, with the tandem stripping roll feed, that process is a little bit more delicate and a little bit more refined. With tandem stripping roll feeds, what we're going to do is we're going to take the material, pass it into the first stripping roll feed or the number one roll feed, feed the matrix down. And when the matrix bends down, we're going to kick the part out and grab it with the second roll feed, at which time we'll eject it out onto the conveyor, like what you see here. Now, a question I often get asked is, well, what parts are good or what materials are good for tandem stripping? And usually the best way to answer that question is, is any material where you have a little bit of rigidity or some thickness is going to be a good candidate for tandem stripping. When you're ready to reduce your overall labor and start thinking about automation, it's time to start thinking about knockouts and tandem stripping. They're really going to allow you to increase your throughput, decrease your labor costs, and get more product out throughout the day. Thanks for watching this episode of Tech Tips, and look back for more episodes. Thanks for watching.